Hi, I'm Adam Kopp and you're at BeachCast. Welcome to another video in my basic refactoring series. Let's talk about refactoring code with move method and when you might want to move a method from one class to another. So stick around and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. We're going to talk about the refactoring called move method and when you might want to move a method from one class to another to preserve design and maybe help your code in other ways. This is another video in my basic refactoring series. I'll link to the playlist up above, so go ahead and go to the playlist and you can see all the other videos in this refactoring series. When it comes to object-oriented programming, we have classes and we have methods within the classes. Now, a class should solve a problem. And that's the reason for a class is to, to solve a problem. Within the class, as I said, there are methods and each method performs one action toward solving that problem. But what happens when a method does more than one thing? When a method does more than one thing, it creates a lot of hassles. First off, it makes it really difficult to test. If you're trying to use unit testing in your code, and you should use unit testing in your code, it makes testing really difficult because you have to test each method to do more than one thing. So it makes the design of code much better if you try to keep your methods to doing one thing. So methods should be very short, just enough code to perform that one thing that it needs to do. If a method gets to the point where it's doing more than one thing, or if a class kind of loses its way in the design of the application, oftentimes a method might need data from another class in order to perform its function, what it's supposed to do. And this can create its own set of issues where the data resides elsewhere and we need it within our method. These are some prime reasons why you might want to move a method from one class to another to help with testability, clean up the design, and make sure that your method is with the data it should be with. And if a method no longer really performs an action to help solve the problem that the class is trying to solve. So let's take a look at some code to show this problem and the solution a lot easier. Now out on my GitHub, I have a uh, repository called Refactoring 101. It's been there for many, many years. I encourage you to go out and check out the code there. And in that code, I've created multiple steps, multiple refactors. And I use that for training. I use it when I'm speaking and also for these videos. So go out and check it out. I'll make sure to link to that down below in the description. And I'm going to show the code in this video. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the sponsor for this video, Cloudways. Cloudways allows you to focus on your business and avoid web hosting hassles. Go live in minutes by selecting your application, selecting the vendor your server should be housed with, then select the server size for your chosen provider, and you're ready. Please use the affiliate link in the description below to support the BeachCast channel and to claim your one month of free hosting. Okay, so here's the code in question. We can see we have a customer class. If we scroll down a bit further, we see that we also have a movie class and we have a rental class. Now. Convention for PHP applications uh, say that you should have a class per one class per file, and I encourage that. However, I'm putting multiple classes only for demonstration purposes and ease of use within the Refactoring 101 repository. Now, in the past couple videos, you may recall that we had a method that we created called amount4. We named it amount4 and we moved a switch statement into that method. This switch statement basically calculates the charge for a rental, and that's why we're doing it in the statement method. So within the statement method, uh, we're, we're basically building a statement, and that is the one thing that this method is supposed to do. Uh, and then uh, we have a for each that loops over, and then it's calling a mount for to uh, basically create the charge. Now, amount4 is not really a good name. We tried naming it appropriately. However, amount4 doesn't really specify what it does, at least not very well. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to rename this method to something a little bit more meaningful. 
So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to right click in my IDE and I'm going to select refactor and rename. Now, when I do that, it highlights it for being renamed and you can see where it's actually being called at the top of the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and call this instead get charge and you'll notice that PHP Storm is is changing where it's being called as well as what I'm typing in the function name. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. So that refactor has been done. So now our function is get charge because that's essentially what the function is doing. If we look at this get charge method, we'll notice that we're passing the rental object into it. We see that we're using uh, from from the the rental we're calling movie and then we're calling the get price. Down here we're calling from the rental object get days rented and we're also calling get days rented here from the rental object and and again we're, we're just using that rental over and over throughout this method so it's not really using any other data other than what is in the rental object and the methods within the rental object and it's also uh, calculating the charge that will be used in the statement, but that's not part of making the statement. Uh, getting the charge is not part of making the statement. The statement should be given the charge and then make the statement. So I'm going to highlight the entire thing just like that. And I'm going to cut it out and then come down to the rental. And in the rental, I'm going to go ahead and paste it in just like that. Now we need to do some an additional refactor up where we're calling this though because now it's not being called from within the same class now it's actually being called to an external class. So let's go up and take a look at where that's being called in the statement method. And up here you'll see that, that the IDE is, is crying a little bit because it's not finding it and that's because we need to change instead of this we need to call to uh, rental and rental get charge and now that satisfies that so we fixed that so it's still going to be able to call the get charge method from the rental and we're passing the rental to it um, and now this code will work as is because we're calling the get charge and we're passing the rental to it and it's expect expecting to use the rental however now that get charge is actually in the rental class we no longer need to use that variable that's being passed into the method. So if I were to remove this rental because we don't need it anymore. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. I'm going to come up here to the statement and I'm not going to pass the rental into that get charge anymore. So I'm going to go down to the get charge now and continue refactoring there. All right, so in the get charge method now, if we look, we actually have an error here because it's not finding rental because I'm no longer passing rental into it. I'm going to right click, select refactor and rename. And instead of rental, I'm going to call it this. And you'll notice that it also changed all the in instances of rental below to this as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now the refactor has been done. And so now we're calling from within the the object the way we should uh, we're not passing it in any longer we're using the data within the method and and calculating the result so that was a series of a couple different refactors first we renamed the method to make it more meaningful and then we moved the method to another class where it follow it, it was with the data that it was using to begin with and it also improved the design. It improved the testability of the code and ensured that our methods are doing one thing, or at least the get charge method is doing one thing. There's still some refactoring yet to go in this project. However, that's it for this video. Now I'm going to link up above here to uh, another video in the series. So I encourage you to check that out uh, as well as the entire playlist. And I thank you for watching. Be good to yourself and others, and I'll see you next time.